guys welcome back to JR14 here I am with another video for you guys regarding project mark 7 so what we're gonna be talking about is maintenance and making sure that you are taking care of your vehicle so things I've done to the pre to the mark 7 currently we have like almost 60,000 miles on this car right now I know short amount of time we've done oil changes every 5,000 miles I'm very very anal on that every 5,000 miles especially on a tuned vehicle you want to make sure you're changing that oil frequently also at around 40,000 miles I changed the transmission fluid as well as the Heldex system for the LSD the electronic LSD in the front of a performance package GTI for the mark 7 platform I've also changed that as well so these are things that you can actually make sure you know to make sure you're taking care of your car to make sure that it's going to run for the long term however there are things especially now in our days with motors that you can't prevent one of the things that we're going to talk about today is carbon buildup so one of the major things especially with direct injection motors as the mqb e888 engine has um you we all know about this carbon buildup which is basically building up gunk on the back of the valves and causing it to sometimes misfire horrible fuel economy and it's not gonna the car's just not gonna run at its full potential so today we're gonna install an oil catch can from ECS <laughs> So here we are. The good thing about most of ECS parts, you can actually locate the PDF on every single one of their parts that they make uh, as, as an installation guide. So right now we're looking at all the parts that should be included with the kit. As you can see, we have all the other excess pieces here, as well as the actual catch can itself in this nice lovely little ECS box. But, cool. they give you the required tools. and they also give you the required tools i don't know how good this camera is and i don't think it's gonna get Maybe all the words yeah. oh so stop it <laughs> let's see if it's gonna you just really screwed up this <laughs> yeah but obviously you're gonna need tools such as for this job you're gonna need tools such as i need and i'm reading off of the ecs website with the pdf guide all you really need is a 3 8 drive ratchet, um, torques, drivers, and sockets, um, a quarter, a quarter inch drive ratchet, a quarter inch uh, drive deep and shallow sockets, a quarter inch uh, drive extensions, adjustable type wrenches, and a hex fit Allen wrench and socket kit. So that's all you really need to do to install this. So without further ado, guys, we're going to go ahead and get this installed with this little guy. Not this little guy, but that little guy. <laughs> so what we did first, we actually removed this bolt right here. Hopefully this could zoom in, there we go. Um, so we took this bolt out right here, and we took another bolt off the coolant line. It's like a holder for it, it's right down there. You can see that, I'm sure you can, maybe not. I'm trying to get down there. Right over there, the one with the empty one where my finger is right there. That one we took out. This way you're able to move, this is really hot. You're able to wiggle this coolant line up and down so that you can get this, what is it, a PCV hose? Yeah. yeah. So you can get this PCV hose, which is all of this, which connected to the turbo inlet pipe. Get that all removed so this way you can complete your installation. And yes, so. We gotta take off, we gotta take off the turbo and like like George said, JSMK7 has done this before on his oil catch can as well. So we're actually going ahead and we're gonna remove the turbo inlet pipe. Well, he actually wants to remove the whole intake first, which we have to also do. Ooh, it's so strong. So what so what we're doing now is that we're actually trying to lift these up a little bit. These are the ignition coil, the ignition coil uh, connectors so that we can get the P, uh, PCV holes from underneath it. So the idea is essentially you want to actually be able to, that was funny how I made a noise like right after that. So what we're trying to do is that we're just trying to fish this underneath that and also the, the coolant line, which is, looks like a bit of a headache. Yeah, you gotta keep twisting it a certain way. Just be careful not to touch the turbo because that'll literally solder your hand. <laughs> Pretty much. Ah, oh, this twisting game. Like that, and, and it's out. 
All right. So this is the PCV hose that goes from the PCV system to the actual uh, turbo inlet. And that's why sometimes if you ever change your turbo inlet pipe, you kind of see like a little bit of like brown, like a brown substance. That is the, uh, that's the oil from the PCV. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, working here. Yeah. we're gonna even it out or what? We're gonna definitely even it out. We're, definitely <laughs> we're trying to like not rush this. We want to show you guys this as well in the proper steps, but we feel in raindrops right now. And even though there's, looks like there's sun over there, we got all this coming towards this way here. So it doesn't look like it's uh, gonna be a, uh, a good one, but we're gonna go ahead and try to figure it out. All right, so before we got started on this, there was one thing I actually wanted to mention, the Torque Solutions diverter valve spacer. Um, a lot of road grime gets in my engine bay throughout the years, and I guess it was causing my, my diverter valve to get stuck, um, sometimes under throttle, which doesn't give me the full potential boost when I'm on throttle. So I actually took it off, and I'm just running the, the stock diverter back again. Um, so I tried a little bit, you get a little bit of boost noise with it. However, if you do live in an area with a lot of road grind like New York, expect a lot of gunk to get in there and to get your diverter valve kind of stuck. But we're not talking about the diverter valve today. We're actually gonna get started on this ECS install. So what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be pretty much, it's pretty, it look, the reason why I haven't done this, took me so long to do this is I was always intimidated by it, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually fish the line through. So what we're doing, this piece actually connects onto this hose. We actually screwed this on so we could just feed this in underneath everything. Just a lot easier that way, a lot cleaner that way. And it's a lot simpler for you because obviously if we threaded this on underneath it, it will be a lot more, it will be difficult to actually get a wrench in there and try to thread it. So we're actually gonna make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead. And we're gonna go ahead and try to put this in. This needs to be like this, yes. this way can you put this in first and then run the whole line out but it's not enough flex to do that okay so initially you could do this I mean we me and me and George do this like a different way but um, normally ECS would want you to put the oil catch can in first we actually did this first so we actually got went ahead and put the bolts in. We got the lines running uh, for everything. If you actually take this, um, the harness for the spark, sorry. If you actually take the harness for the solenoid in the back, you can actually uh, fish this around if you pulled the injector harness as well um, over the side. You just gotta make sure that this is tightened up to the block off plate that goes on this side as well. Yeah, so we made sure that this was threaded on tightly so we're not leaking oil out of that right there, which is the um, the feed line. And then we're gonna do the return line next. But we're actually gonna go ahead and we might actually go ahead. This is the hard, this is the hardest part of this kit. Literally, the, other than that, it's just running the lines, making sure they're safely ran to the side and then mounting the oil catch can on its side. But uh, now we're gonna go ahead and I believe we're gonna go ahead and start the um, the process for the return line, which is this 90 degree hose here that'll connect back to that inlet insert right there. So yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll give you an update after this is done. Okay, so the next part of the kit, which is this 90 degree angle uh, uh, adapter. You see this other adapter that's automatically gonna clip on to this inlet piece right here. So there's an adapter with the little green clip that they give you in the kit. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out. And you pretty much slip that in the side. And you put this on first and then you slip that clip in the middle so it doesn't pull out. All right, so got the plate, got, that, got the feed line. And here, this is the return line. So this is coming, this is the air that's gonna come out of here separating that oil and uh, moisture and then air comes in the return line into the intake. 
So this will autofocus. That'll be amazing right now. Perfect. So that's what it's supposed to look like with the clip on it. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and install the oil catch can on this side of the car. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that and we're going to go ahead and install it. So at this point, at this point, the coolant line, um, uh, the coolant line screw that you took out just to loosen it to give it a little bit of play. You can remove that. You can put that back in now. All the hoses, as far as running them, is good to go. So at this point, all we need to do now is to install the oil catch can itself. So we're going to go ahead and do that. George is going to tighten up there, and then I'm going to go ahead and install the oil catch can. They tell you this in the instructions, but just be aware, this is not for one, this is for two. So the nut on the bottom of this is going to be used to clamp this part on the bottom of this, uh, which I'll show you now. So you're going to bolt this part. So we're going to take this nut off first. Let me do this away from the end. <laughs> Two seconds later. Okay. So what we're going to do, just for now, we're just going to slide this in place. Line it up. And this screw that comes with it, all you got to do put that in there and I'm going to get, this is probably most likely it is, they have a little imprint on what millimeter it is. It's a 10 millimeter nut. So we're going to go ahead, I already have that set up, so I'm going to go grab that and put it in. So, oh, no, <laughs> all right. So, before it starts to rain again, no, my luck. All right. So, here we go. There's an Allen key in here, which was the 10 mil, <laughs> the 10 Allen key, which was that. I don't think we'll be needing that anymore, uh, because we actually had the tools. And there it is. So, the ECS tuning. Just send it. Destroy it. All right. So, so it does have. So this is a baffle. Stop There's four baffles in. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I don't know. Just, just. All right. So, the ECS oil catch can. Nice slim design. This little cutout right here. It's actually is going to sit directly in here. Nice clean flush look with the bracket and also this uh, really nice like black matte finish. Actually, satin finish is dope. You also do have the dipstick right here. The level obviously here. And you also do have the baffles. Now, when you're installing this, ECS is going to be facing this way, not this way, which is, you know, ah well. So, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but the part with the holes in it, uh, which is the um, one of the filters for it, that is going to go on the right side of the, of the, the new unit. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew this. All right, so one thing that we have to do, as you can see, we have lines running underneath here. We have a line running here. This is all in the way of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop these out of its place. So we're just going to... Ah. Okay. You should get a nice focus of your back of your head. Nice. So let's find out, shall we? One at a time? Hmm? Maybe one at a time? Yeah. Yellow? Yellow. Yellow. Ones. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Let's not get these confused now. The short one is the go on this. Alright, what are you doing, Jay? Alright, so now I'm just trying to line these up. So as I'm tugging on the line, if you don't remember if it kind of gets a little confusing towards the end if you don't know like where these lines meet, tug on one side and look and see which side moves to know which side it is. 
So this is the PVC going into the system that puts all the bad moisture and stuff in the bottom of the filter, um, bottom of the oil catch can, and your return is going into the intake. So that's coming up and out. So that's going to be this line right here. So right now I'm just tightening up the the feed first. these are just really nice and tight so that nothing you get no leaks or anything like that now you just tuck this as much as we need it to just to set it back in here safely and the bottom of the can itself This is loose in here like this. It should tighten it. It goes tighter. Does tighten it? Tighten it till it doesn't move. Oh yeah, move. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tighten it till it doesn't move. There you go. And so, all right, we finished. We tightened everything up. We made sure everything was good to go. Um, now what we're gonna do is, before I put the valve cover back on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and start it up, check the leaks, make sure everything is good with the PCV system. Um, no error codes. I'm sure we get error codes, but um, just to make sure nothing rubs on anything and we'll be good to go. So let's start her up. Okay. There, here. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back on. Oil catch can, the lines are good. The turn line's good. Pop this guy back on. All right, guys. Well, that's going to conclude this installation of the ECS uh, oil catch can for the Mark 7 GTI. If you do have any other questions that you haven't seen in this video, Please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and comment down below in the comment box so that this way I'm able to answer all your questions. And also, that's it. There's definitely going to be more stuff to come with the car. We're winding down a little bit because obviously Mark 7 is getting done, but we're definitely going to have more soon. So without further ado, guys, take care.